Parsha Svayichi. In the beginning of this week's Parsha, Yaakov uh, falls ill. And it says, Vahi <clears> Achar, <throat> this is in Perak Memches Pasukalaf, that's 48.1. It says, Vahi Achar, Vayomer li Yosef. And he said to Yosef, now there's no antecedent to this pronoun, Vayomer. And he said, Who's the he who said? So Rashi says that it was Ephraim because uh, that there are those who say it was Ephraim because Ephraim used to learn regularly with Yaakov. Okay. Uh, interesting footnote. It says that Yaakov was ill. Ephraim, perhaps, mentions, more on that later, mentions that um, to Yosef, that his father is sick, so they come, and Yosef sits up, and then he famously gives bracha to Ephraim and Menashe, and it's unusual in a couple of ways. First of all, he says that Ephraim and Menashe, even though they're his grandchildren, not his children, they're going to be deemed to be uh, of equal status as his children, Ruvain and Shimon, his two oldest children, um, Menashe and Ephraim. Uh, also, uh, much to uh, Yosef's uh, displeasure, which the Torah records, um, Yaakov puts his right hand on Ephraim's head and his left hand on Menashe's head, even though Menashe was the Bechor. Menashe was the oldest. And Yosef objects. He tries to move his father's hand. And he says, no, it wasn't a mistake. It was deliberate. doesn't say it in those words, but that's the clear implication of what Yaakov says. He says, no. He says, um, <clears throat> Manasseh is going to be great. Ephraim is going to be greater. And he, uh, the, the right hand evidently symbolizes preference or uh, gr um, greater accomplishment or greater potential. So we might ask a question. Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky does ask the question. Um, Yaakov might have been by now sensitive to the consequences, one might say adverse or even disastrous consequences of showing uh, any kind of favoritism towards one child over another. How is it that, first of all, he gives special status to Yosef's children? And number two, how is it that he gives special status to Ephraim over that of Menashe? So now let's look at the verses, the context of um, the bracha, that lead up to the bracha. Yaakov says, Kel Shakai Nira Eli Beluz Beretz Kanai. Kel Shakai, two names for God. God, the protector, appeared before me in Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he says, I'm going to make you great, and uh, I will give this land, when Asati Eretz Yisrael, that's referring to Eretz Canaan, which eventually became Eretz Yisrael, and Yaakov is Yisrael, to your children for an eternal inheritance. And now, Vata, and this is Yaakov speaking, Shnei Vanecha Hanola Dimlecha Be'eretz Mitzrayim Ad Bo Yelecha Mitzrayim Alihem. And now, your two children who were born in Egypt, until I came to Egypt, before I came to Egypt, they're mine, and Ephraim and Manasseh will be like Reuven and Shimon. There is a key here, there's a hint, says Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, that Yaakov is explaining why he's doing the, this kind of bracha, why he's giving a special bracha to Ephraim and Manasseh. He says, Hanolodim l'cha be'eretz Mitzrayim. These children were foreign born. These children never saw Beis Yaakov. These children did not grow up in Yaakov's house. I mean, even Yosef himself was but a teen when he left Yaakov's house, but certainly his, his children. They were born in Egypt. They need special protection. And why Ephraim over Manasseh? Well, Ephraim needed even more special protection. Why is this? What's the, what's, what's the tip-off? So if we go back to Perek Mem Aleph, Pasuk Nun. That's 4150. The verse says, Yosef Shnei Vanim, Tavo There were born to Yosef two sons before the, the years of famine came. Asher Yodalo Osnas Bas Potifera Koinon. That Osnas, the daughter of Potifera, we'll get back to that in a minute also, the Koin of On. Yosef called gave the name of, of the oldest. He gave the name Menasha. Why? Because God helped me forget. He relieved me of all of my travail and of the house of my father. That's Menasha, the oldest. 
And the second one he called Ephraim. What does Ephraim mean? Ki Ephraim elokim be'eretz ani. God made me bountiful, fruitful in the land of my oppression. So there are <clears throat> two distinct implications in these names. Menashe is that he relieved me of the travail of my youth, of Besavi. And <clears throat> Ephraim is he made me successful. Menashe still related back. Was still, there was still a connection for Menashe to the house of Jacob, even though he didn't, never saw it. He was never there. But there was still this consciousness that, that is reflected in his name. That of of um, Kol Amali and base Kol Base Avi, the house of my father. In fact, when later, uh, a few verses later, several verses later, uh, the in Membez Chaf Gimel, that's forty two twenty three, the Torah says Vehem Lo Yodu, the brothers did not know Kishama Yosef Kamalitz Ben Osam, that Yosef heard, meaning understood what they were talking about, in presumably Lashon Kodesh in Hebrew because the interpreter was there. In other words, the presence of the interpreter might suggest that Yosef does not understand Hebrew and he needs someone to translate. And Rashi says, who is that interpreter? Menashe. So Menashe knew Lashon Kodesh. He knew the language of his grandfather. And he served as the interpreter. So we know a couple things. We know that Menashe was an interpreter and knew Lashon Kodesh and that he related back to base of to his father's father's house. And we knew that we know that Ephraim was Rogil, the Limud, with Yaakov. He used to learn regularly with Yaakov. Why? So it appears to be all of a piece. Yaakov is giving, is shoring up the risky part of the family. What's the risky part of the family? The family that did not grow up in Canaan, that did not grow up in Beis Yaakov, in the house of Jacob. They needed special protection. They needed special bracha. They needed special status. They needed special care. And so he elevated them to the level of the original tribes so that they would have equal status and not deficient status as a result of being, let's call it, foreign-born. And Ephraim, who now is not, the his name is not reflective of a consciousness of Yosef's father, but is rather reflective of the consciousness of success in the land of Egypt, Yaakov says, come on, let's learn. We're going to learn together. Yaakov creates a special relationship with Ephraim who is most in need of the chizuk, of the encouragement, of the support. Yaakov also suggests that there's a pattern within Egyptian names that recurs or occurs in Ephraim's name as well. Rebecca Kamenetsky suggests that common consonants, consonants that are found commonly in Egyptians, Egyptian names, are common, a combination of two or three of the letters Pe, Resh, and Ayin. So you have Par O, Pe, Resh, Ayin, He. You have Potifera, which is Pe, Resh, Ayin, also. You have Yosef, whose name is Yosef, but Paro names him Tsofnas Paneach, which has a Pe and an Ayin. We also know, says Rabbi Yaakov, that the Mialdos Evrios, the Jewish midwives who we understand to be Yocheved and Miriam, they went by different names. What were the names that they went by? Their Egyptian names, Shifra, Peresh, and Pu'a, Pe'ayin. And now, how about Ephraim? Rabbi Yaakov says that Ephraim is an Egyptian name. It's also a Hebrew name, but it has an Egyptian ring to it because it has a Pe and a Resh. And so Ephraim is really, uh, it's hard to say that he's Egyptian, but he, ha he is more engaged in the Egyptian culture than any of the children. Both Menashe and Ephraim are, and Ephraim even more. So Menashe and Ephraim need special chizuk, and Ephraim needs even more chizuk. And as a result, says Rabbi Yaakov, Yaakov Avinu gives spe a special bracha and special charge to Ephraim to be mechazik him and to understand that he's in Egypt, but our real home is in Eretz Yisrael. So perhaps there are two lessons from this. Number one, our real home is Eretz Yisrael. And no matter where we are, our real home is Eretz Yisrael. That's number one. Number two, when we address our children and when we think about what we do for our children, we might have to give special treatment to those who have who are most at risk 
we may have to give more care and more loving, tender, tending to the children who are, are more at risk of either risky behaviors or simply leaving the fold. And this is the lesson of Yaakov Avinu. Have a good chance.